okay so my last video disk was disconnected abruptly i will continue from where i left so i have data x1 x2 xn iid normal with mean mu variance sigma then i take the ratio x bar minus mu sigma by root n i told you that this distribution will be n01 standard normal uh, now if sigma is known then you can use this, this ratio for testing mu equal to mu naught against a mu uh, two-sided alternative hypothesis mu naught equal to mu naught but if sigma is not known then um, we have to insert an estimator of the sigma and in this case the estimator that you we will insert is the s which is the squ uh, square root of um, this ratio square root of 1 by n minus 1 the square root of this quantity so you so you can see this ratio x bar minus mu divided by s and this will go in the numerator so root n into x bar minus mu by s um, uh, here only unknown quantity is mu x bar is the sample mean and s is the square root of the uh, bias corrected variance now this distribution is not normal x bar if x1 x2 xn are iid normal then x bar is normal but s is not normal and this ratio is not normal so this distribution uh, is known as the student's t distribution the distribution of this ratio is known as the student's t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom so now i will um, so if you are testing a null hypothesis h naught mu is equal to zero against mu not equal to zero then under another null hypothesis the test statistic will be x bar by uh, x bar by s into root n so root n into x bar by s that will follow under null hypothesis student's t distribution with n minus 1 degree of freedom and then that distribution can be used to compare that uh, to, uh, to uh, fix your type 1 error <coughs> level of significance that is probability of type 1 error you can use it to compute power and so and so forth and you can use it to compute the p-value so now we let us look at what is the formula of the probability density function so um, probability density function uh, is a non-negative valued function by integrating which you compute probabilities for almost all the continuous distributions that i have introduced you have a density that is there is a non-negative function or that function is ft which integrates to one now for each every distribution this fun function has a unique formula for students t distribution the formula is as you can see for initially just ignore this so let us look at this so ft where t is the variable is 1 plus t square by mu mu is a constant raised to the power if you see the power is negative minus of mu plus 1 by 2 that means actually uh, if i am writing it this would go in the denominator so it will be 1 by 1 plus t square by mu raised to the power mu plus 1 by 2 mu is a positive constant and it is called the degrees of freedom it's a peculiar term but uh, um, nevertheless frequently used in probability statistics so uh, and uh, uh, and if you integrate uh, if you forget this constant just look at this function as a function of t t is any real number t is uh, varying from minus infinity to plus infinity this is a non-negative quantity uh, yes but if you integrate it it will not integrate it to one so it will integrate to something reciprocal of this so we multiply by this ratio to make it the integral one this function is called the gamma function and gamma function um, i would if you don't know i would maybe present prepare a presentation so one property is that gamma half is root over pi so this root over pi is actually gamma half so we can summarize it um, this is a beta function now what is a beta mn function beta mn is gamma m into gamma n divided by gamma m plus n that's why you can if you look write this up as a square root of pi as gamma half then this becomes beta half mu by 2 so this is the formula of the density function now mu is a positive number if you put mu is equal to half 
then what will you have then you will get only here you will have a square this will be one this will be one gamma one is one the uh, basically uh, for any positive uh, mu gamma mu is mu minus one factorial okay so uh, this gamma and gamma half is square root of pi so this will be one this will be square root of pi this will be again square root of pi and this will be one so if you put mu is equal to one so that will be one by pi one by one plus t square mu is one this will be one plus one by two that is one so for mu is equal to one the formula will become i will ask you to write down the formula in a plain paper that would be one by pi into one by one plus t square so one by one plus t square so that is a very standard distribution known as the cauchy distribution okay so that is one special case of the student t distribution and if you take limit mu tends to infinity if you take the limit mu tends to infinity then you will get normal distribution okay so um, so uh, the, uh, you see student t distribution uh, is a family of distributions that means you vary this mu you will get different uh, this type of student t distribution and if i go back to my original point what is the distribution of this ratio x bar minus mu s by root over n where x i is iid a, 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 a normal distribution with mean mu this ratio is uh, uh, is a continuous distribution with density where mu is equal to n minus 1 so i told you this follows student's t distribution with n minus 1 degree of freedom that means you put n minus 1 here okay and so this is a very widely <coughs> used probability distribution in statistics and it has some proper important properties that i will mention So you see, these are the different shapes of the curves. So when you change the degree of freedom, degree of freedom one, then that is Cauchy. And the point is that the larger the degree of freedom becomes, the more peaked the curve will become. And for mu is equal to one, it is a lot flatter and heavier in the tail region. So uh, it is from uh, so the more you increase the mu degree of freedom, it will go closer to a standard normal curve. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here it is. If you put mu is equal to one, then you get the Cauchy distribution. Then for mu is equal to two and mu is equal to three, you see these are the different forms of this distribution. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And here it is saying mu is equal to infinity, but mu is equal to infinity, you should know it is only symbolic meaning because you cannot have infinity is not a number. So there, if you, it means that what I said, if you take limit mu tends to infinity. So mu is equal to infinity here is a symbol, which means if you take limit mu tends to infinity, then you can see here what is this distribution, standard normal distribution. So the student's t will approach standard normal distribution if you increase the degrees of freedom. Here again, they are saying the same thing. You see, I, what I have told you that if I have x x one x two x n numbers from a um, <coughs> distribute common distribution, actually, the point is that they have to be exactly normal with mean mu variance unknown. Then this ratio follows t distribution with n minus one degree of uh, freedom. Now, so the all this information you will get in the Wikipedia um, just type a student's t distribution so this is your Wikipedia page that I had shown in the morning student's t distribution and uh, if you recall quickly that uh, this distribution is named after this gentleman um, the statistician by the name William Silly Gossett and uh, he pop uh, he published it in biometrica in 1908 can you see it uh, 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 where is it 90 yes 1908 william silly published it in bi biometrica so um, this is about an introduction quick introduction but now i will tell you why i mentioned suddenly student distribution today today 
because you have studied the basics of testing of hypothesis and now there is a i have talked about wall test but wall test is too general one of the most common types of testing of hypothesis is called known as a student t test so there the null uh, you this is a test about the population uh, um, uh, population mean where the variance is unknown so you have a sample uh, x1 x2 xn from a population you want to estimate the population mean mu which you don't know so you want to uh, test a hypothesis that mu is equal to mu naught against mu not equal to mu naught so how do you do that the answer is with uh, if you don't know the variance then with, uh, you have to use the student's t statistic that is you have to use which ratio you have to use the ratio x bar minus of course null hypothesis is mu is equal to mu naught so uh, x bar minus mu naught divided by s uh, by root n so that we will say that root n into x bar minus mu naught by s this ratio so we will use this ratio as the test statistic under the null hypothesis mu is equal to mu naught and now uh, uh, we know that under null hypothesis this follows um, uh, this ratio follows this student's t distribution with mu is equal to n minus 1. So you can uh, uh, find out the wall type critical region or rejection region that is mode of this quantity exceeding the alpha by 2th qua quantile of uh, this student t distribution. Maybe I will send you in my write up that I have promised. So you can get a two-sided uh, rejection region and then uh, you can also write down the uh, 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 what would be the probability of type 1 error that you can see and you can find out the p-value. And so th this is all about your student's t distribution and student's t test. Thank you.